Let's talk about the old world and uh, and its new approach. The old world, that's uh, Europe, basically, where wine was started. And we're like the newbies. Uh, the old world's been creating wine for thousands of years. The European Union organized a wine classification system, which consists of two tiers. The bottom tier called table wine, and the top tier called quality wine. So they're trying to be the snob appeal people. The concept of the quality wine level is based on wines produced from a specific place. The EU, uh, EU has actively encouraged quality wine and discouraged the production of the table wine category. Let's we'll start with the wines of France. The French winemakers produce a variety of different wines and styles that might be a bit daunting to the novice wine drinker. But by applying some generalizations on the major varietals, regions, appellations, it can become easier to solidify an understanding of the French wines. Okay, let's talk some French wine. The regions of France can be divided into areas on the basis of the grape varietals, the types of grapes, and the climate in that area. The northern section of France, Champagne region, northern Burgundy, and Alsace is subject to a continental climate that consists of four distinct seasons with short summers and harsh winters. That type of climate contributes to con uh, creating tart grapes with higher acid and the preservation of mineral qualities. Alsace region produces mostly white wines from the Riesling, Gewurzenheimer, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris grapes. Alsace also produces sparkling wines and dessert wines. And as a reminder, unless I uh, say something or it's red or bold, uh, you're probably just reading this for general enjoyment and so you can have a sense of remembering it later on if you want to check the book. So you don't need to memorize all of these slides. The Burgundy area, Burgundy region, produces both red and white wines. Red wine grape production is primarily from the Pinot Noir and Gamay, while white wine production is from the Chardonnay grape. The Champagne region, Champagne is world famous for sparkling wines produced from varying blends of Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay grape varietals. So it's only Champagne if it's uh, grown in the Champagne region of France, otherwise they have to call it sparkling wines. It's important you get these pronunciations right if uh, you'll sound rather ignorant where you're trying to sound smart if you don't say the word properly. So Bordeaux the Bordeaux region produces red and white wine and dessert wine. Red wine grapes are primarily blended in varying quantities of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and others. White wines, whether dry table or sweet dessert wines, are primarily produced from varying quantities of Sauvignon Blanc and Sauvignon varieties. So you can see here when you uh, you look on the wine shelf and you see Chablis, Bordeaux, um, Burgundy, Champagne. Those are regions in uh, France where these wines come from. So in the Beaujolais region of France, they have 12 appellations. I guess it was l like be saying the southeast, and it has 10 states, that type of thing. So there's 12 appellations of the region. They're divided into three levels of quality. Beaujolais quality, Beaujolais village, and Cru of Beaujolais. Beaujolais grapes are grown in the southernmost region called Basse Beaujolais. They produce very simple, flowery, and fruity wines that must be drunk young. Beaujolais Nouveau is within the basic category and consists of about 50% of Beaujolais production. It's young wine produced in the Beaujolais region of France from the current year's Gamay harvest. So you can see you can't just say Beaujolais. Uh, you need to know within the Beaujolais what type of Beaujolais, otherwise they're going to taste different. 
The fermentation process for the wine takes about three to four days. It's only about nine weeks old when it's released, thus nouveau meaning young. Beaujolais Village Wines bearing the Beaujolais Village label are restricted to using grapes coming from at least two of the 39 communes in Haut Beaujolais and account for about a quarter of the total annual production of this region. Again, let me say, I don't want to get scared away by all this. You don't need to remember all this, but you do need to know when you go look at a bottle of Beaujolais that there's different types of Beaujolais. If you just at least know that, and then you can ask for some advice from the place where you're buying the wine and takes a long time to get expertise in all this stuff. I just want you to have the basics. Due to the better growing conditions, these are better wines with more complexity and depth with aging capabilities. In other words, they will age well. You can keep them and they will age well. Some wines are meant to be drunk when you get them. Cour Beaujolais, the highest quality Beaujolais, comes from one of the ten major vineyards called Cru. Each crew creates wine with its own special character and dimensions of aroma and flavor. The crew are historically named after villages with romantic sounding names such as Fleury and Saint Amour. Bruy is what my wife and I would recommend. That's our favorite wine in the world and it is hard to find. If you see some, grab it. Chanet, Chirouble, Chiroubla. Côte de Bruy and Fleury. Let's move over to Italy. Italian wine label terms uh, Bianco is white, as in uh, white wine in Italian, like Blanc. Bianco is a white wine. Classico is the designation on a wine label indicating that the grapes in the wine come from the original classic growing area rather than the expanded zone. In other words, Chianti Classico as opposed to Chianti Rufina. So Chianti Classico comes from the original uh, growing area for Chianti and then they opened up some new areas, Chianti Rufino. And how long the uh, the vines have been there matters a lot in terms of the uh, flavor. And vino just means wine. Okay, so we're just going to go with the DOCG and call it a day there. They, these are wines that are produced with the highest standards than any of the other classification levels. All wines of this category are given an identifiable paper strip just below the lip of each wine bottle. There are approximately 32 DOCGs in Italy. In other words, where they pr produce wine to the strictest Italian standards. The first five wine areas that were granted the prestigious DOCG classification were the Barola, Barbaresco, Chianti, uh, Vino Nobile di Montepulcino and Brunello di Montalcino. Only three I ever heard of, to tell you the truth, is Barolo, Barbaresco, and Chianti. In uh, northeast Italy, the Veneto area, you have Suave, which is a dry white wine made from the uh, Garganiza varietal. Suave Classico comes from the smaller original Suave producing area. Bordellino, this wine is made from the same blend of grapes as Valpolicello, is lighter bodied and served chilled. Valpolicello, this wine is made from a blend of three different grapes. It's fruity, medium to full bodied red wine with a moderate tannins and aroma suggestive of cherries, chocolate with a hint of almond. Chianti is the wine zone around Florence and Siena, Italy. Chianti is 
primarily made from the red Sangiovese grape and historically has been made with smaller amounts of white grape varietals to lighten the wine. It's, Chianti is a heavier wine. Chianti consists of 75 to 100 percent Sangiovese blended with up to 20 percent of Cabernet Sauvignon and or Merlot to lighten it up. Reserva must have at least 12.5% alcohol and be aged for a minimum of 3 years and 3 months. So this is where you use some of this information. So if you're, uh, you or your boss or your friends like a stronger alcohol, then you would look for Reserva on the label. And you know, little by little, you just you learn here, you learn there, and after you do that for a few years, then you're somewhat of a wine expert. The Wines of Germany the uh, label indicators of grape brightness, uh, ripeness, if it says uh, Cabinet, that would usually be light, low alcohol, that often hovers around 8.5 to 9%, often smells and tastes of tart green apples, so this is uh, how you learn, how you grow, how you try new things, if you're reading that and you say, oh man, I love green apples. I haven't had a green apple in a long time. Well, then when you go to buy a wine, uh, try a Cabernet and you might like it. Spelesa. These are late harvest grapes made from very ripe grapes picked after the normal harvest. You see some bold there, so remember that. Spelesa is uh, very ripe grapes picked after the normal harvest, so they leave them on the vine. Later harvest lets the grapes dry and ripen on sunny autumn days, which increases the intensity of the fruit and the flavors. Ice wine. For a sweet ending to a nice meal, ice wine, or Eiswein in German, is created in cold climates where the grapes are left on the vine into the late fall and the winter to freeze. Once the grapes are sufficiently frozen, they're hand-picked in the early morning or late evening, and they're pressed while still frozen. Since the grapes have been left on the vine for a longer period, the water content is decreased, it dissipates into the air, and the sugar content therefore is increased. Any remaining water is frozen, leaving a sweet, concentrated juice. So if you like sweet, uh, then with your uh, dessert, you might serve some ice wine. It's expensive. Usually get a small bottle that costs a lot of money. Rheinhessen is the largest German wine growing region with over 63,000 acres of vines. Rheinhessen is the birthplace of Liebfraumilch, which can originate from any of the four wine regions. That's a great wine. If you like sweet, they're often characterized as being soft. Fragrant, medium bodied, mild in acidity, and easy to drink. That's bold. So remember Liebfraumilch, that's, um, that's bolded, and Rheinhessen being a type of Liebfraumilch, and it is noted for being easy to drink. So, which wine would you serve if you uh, just want to make a simple choice that pretty much everybody's going to like? Might be the test question. That would be Rheinhessen wines or Liebfraumilch.